pleased to see so many people here. So um, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to spend uh, a portion of your evening with us tonight. Um, my name's Nicola. I work in the Faculty of Sciences here at the University of Adelaide, and I'll be presenting um, tonight alongside my colleague, Amanda, Professor Amanda Abel, Deputy Dean of Teaching and Learning here in the Faculty of Sciences. Um, as always, we'd like to acknowledge the Ghana people and the original custodians of the Adelaide Plains and the land on which we live today. So a couple of housekeeping uh, things before we get started. If there is a fire, you will hear a whoop whoop noise and we will evacuate out of the doors here at the top um, and uh, meet on the car park, which is just um, to the left as you, as you come out of the building. Toilets. Uh, to the right and the left outside of the uh, lecture theatre. So we've got a lot of information for you tonight, so I'm going to get started. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about some of the cool things that are happening in science right here in South Australia. Um, we're also going to talk about why you should study science, um, why you should study science and why you should study science here at the University of Adelaide. Um, we're going to talk about some of the exciting and uh, emerging careers in science and of course we're also going to talk about the Science Academy programme and um, what's available to you in year 12. Um, and we've got a bit of time for Q&A at the end, so um, if you leave your questions at the end that would be great. So now I'd like to hand over to um, Professor Amanda Abel. Thank you. Thanks Nicola. Wow. It's really great to see so many of you uh, here tonight, uh, particularly when we consider that you're going to be our bright young minds of the future. So it's really great that you're here. Um, as Nicola said, my name's Amanda um, and I'm a professor in plant science. So yes, I'm a scientist, but I primarily focus on plants. And when we think about science in particular, I actually think we're really lucky here in South Australia because we've got, I guess, the best of all worlds because we have lots of mining that happens, we have lots of agriculture and viticulture that happens in this state. And I'm going to give you some of those examples. But being a scientist means that I actually have lots of opportunities open to me. Because I'm a critical thinker, I can solve big problems. So that means that science um, is actually a really valuable type of career that we might have. Um, and one of the other reasons why, me, myself, why I became a scientist was because I can solve problems and I can help to meet challenges. Now I'm a plant scientist, so I like to work with agriculture and in particular make sure that we can try to breed plants that defend themselves better against disease. So I have a purpose in life. I'm trying to help the growers that are out there. And there are lots of other challenges, and I'm going to touch on some of those challenges that face us here, not only in South Australia, but across the world as well. So we might as well stick with the theme of food uh, for the future. And the University of Adelaide has actually got a really strong background in this area. We have um, not only this campus, we also have the Roseworthy campus, which is about, uh, and I'm not sure what direction I'm in here, but it's about, oh, I'm getting told it's that way, which is about uh, 50 kilometres in that direction, and then therefore that means the Waite campus must be in that direction. So we've got a couple of campuses which are world-renowned for their ability to work in this area of agriculture and food. And we work on all sorts of different things. So when you think about the population, we all know that the world's population is growing and it's growing quite rapidly. But here in South Australia, we're also facing that challenge of urban sprawl. I'm pretty sure if you, know, you think about, um, and your parents might know this better than the students in the room perhaps, but if you consider what it looked like 20 years ago, you know, heading up towards the Barossa or down to McLaren Vale, there was hardly any houses down that way. And now everything's actually, we're sprawling. However, luckily, by April 2019, there'll be something in place which will help to stop urban sprawl. But what it does tell us is that there is a real demand on land. And 
a lot of the land that we want to grow houses on, or grow houses on, build houses on, I should say, is actually the land that we need to grow food on. Not all land's terribly good at growing food, so we need to find sustainable ways to grow that food. And the other challenge that we're facing at the moment is obviously climate change. We all know and have seen lots of things on TV. Who's seen all of the stuff that's happening in New South Wales with the droughts? Yeah? So we've seen lots of stories. And what that means is that we have to be able to breed crops that can deal with that type of situation. So not only have we got droughts, we've also got the swinging changes in climate and temperature as well. And we're trying to grow food in this for our population. And so that is quite challenging. You've also got um, the livestock, for example, that's also challenged by this sort of thing. And so you have to be able to work out solutions to help deal with that situation. Because we can't necessarily change the climate, but we can change our practices to make sure that we are delivering the food that we need to in a sustainable manner. That also comes back to this problem of food waste. How much, how many, oh, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions here. How many of you think we waste more than 80% of our food in a week? Nobody? Oh, a couple of people, yeah, okay. What about between 30 and 50%? How about between 0 and 30%, so less than 30%? Most of you are actually kind of in the right ballpark. 30% of fruit and vegetables in this state actually end up being wasted. And that's actually equivalent to about $4,000 per household a year that we're just wasting. We're, we're quite a wasteful society when it comes to food. So can we actually find ways to deal with that food in a better way, other than the way in which we deal with it at home as consumers? Well, we can do a whole bunch of things, particularly when it comes to food processing. So if we have potato waste, maybe we could turn that into a new beverage. If we have apple waste, that's actually currently being worked on at the University of Adelaide with some people to actually turn it into a new product um, linked to apple cider. So there are lots of different ways in which we can think about things. So again, thinking innovatively, thinking about how we can solve a particular problem. And as I mentioned before, we've got around about 130 years of history here. We're very well known in South Australia for working in agriculture, food and wine. And the Waite campus is actually the biggest, uh, I guess, um, concentration of researchers in that area in the Southern Hemisphere and we're the third largest in the world. So we quite like um, our mantle as uh, the largest in the Southern Hemisphere. And given how important agriculture, food and wine are to South Australia, it means that um, we're in the right place to be looking at those things. Other than agriculture, food and wine, you all will have probably heard about the fact that we're going to have the space agency here. Um, when you think about space, it's not just about the stars. Actually, it impacts a lot of industries. It impacts defence. It impacts agriculture again. It impacts a whole range of different things. It impacts you every day when you use your mobile phone because communications and solar flares can play up with sol uh, solar flares, can interact with your... Uh, with satellites, they can interact with communications and cause damage. So we need to be able to understand more about these things and the Space Agency will allow that to happen. So the Space Agency is going to go um, over the road here in the old RAH, which we call uh, Lot 14 for now, in that innovation precinct. And so the fact that this is coming to South Australia is actually a really big opportunity f for those of you that might be interested in heading into that type of science. Um, it's something that um, is going to actually be worth around about $12 billion and create up to 20,000 jobs by 2030 is what the government's predicting. So that's, that's pretty impressive. So we have an opportunity here in South Australia to take advantage of that space agency. 
not only is uh, space important, but obviously biomedical science and biotechnology. Who's seen the, um, we like to call it the spaceship down the other end of North Terrace? Do you know what I'm talking about? The big health medical research. It kind of looks like a spaceship. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> it's a very nice piece of architecture. Um, but within that building, what's inside the building is actually much more important because that's our biomedical science and technology precinct. And so when you're thinking about biomedical science and biotechnology, what we're talking about here really is the ability to deal with all of the diseases that we have to deal with as we get older. We have an ageing population, so that's one thing that we need to think about. Obviously, issues like diabetes are becoming more of an issue also. It's not just that, but it's also some of the new technologies and developing new technologies that can detect cancer more readily and more easily, for example. Um, there are lots and lots of places where biomedical biotechnology and health can take you. And there's also going to be new set of buildings that are going to be built, uh, SAMRI 2 is what we call it, so the South Australian Health and Medical Research Institute is what's currently in the spaceship down the other end, um, but there's going to be a second one there and it's going to have the first proton therapy unit as well. So one of the goals of this is to not just be involved in research, but to also help support things like startup companies. And so what that means is when you're thinking about innovation, you're also thinking about another word called entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship is that ability to take what we learn in a research sense as a scientist and actually apply it in some way to the real world um, and in a commercial sense as well. So that's going to be quite important here in South Australia for us uh, to, I guess, push forward in that space. The other thing that South Australia's got plenty of is lots of sun, lots of solar energy is kind of where we're heading uh, in the future. But not just that, we've also got copper and aluminium, which is quite abundant, and bauxite as well. And so what we've got is we've got a bunch of different companies which have now invested lots of money in South Australia to try to basically, I guess, well, what they do is they bolster our energy and resources sector. And here at the University of Adelaide, we're involved in some of that through a whole range of different projects. So um, examples of different projects that are happening here in South Australia include uh, a solar energy project um, in Wyala, $1.37 billion investment, and that's going to create 350 jobs and hopefully power 96,000 homes. So that's actually got a fairly big impact, particularly when we know that there's been a lot of talk about the cost of power, there's been a lot of talk about actually being able to maintain the energy resources here in South Australia as well. And BHP has got um, some uh, copper discovery and we also know that Alcoa has also got or is working on a project at the moment to convert bauxite to uh, aluminium using solar energy as well. So there's a whole bunch of different things that are happening in this space. So it all requires mind power to help with those particular things. And that's really one of the main reasons why you should study science is because we've got all of these exciting opportunities available in this area. We've got energy and resources, ag, food and wine. We've got um, the medical um, side of things as well. Um, and space, lots of stuff happening in South Australia, which means we've got lots and lots of opportunities available uh, into the future. And when you think about those opportunities, it's not just, okay, great, I'm gonna be able to solve the problem. Actually, close to 80% um, of jobs in the marketplace actually require you to have some type of problem-solving, critical thinking ability. And what science does is that actually increases that ability for you. That is, you learn uh, to become what I regard as more employable. And most employers, when you talk to them within the industry, within all industries in South Australia, will say, OK, I need someone who can solve problems, someone who can think critically, someone who is an active learner 
you guys are all obviously active learners or you wouldn't be here wanting to engage in the Science Academy. So tick, you've already reached one of the, one of the things that employers really want, which is great. They also want people who can communicate well and interact with others well. So they're interpersonal skills. And you know what, as a scientist, that's one of the things we all have to do. I have to make sure if I want my research to mean something, I have to be able to communicate it to the outside world. So that aspect's quite important as well. But one of the other things, if you're not sold on science yet for its problem solving ability, is that the top 10 degrees for, or sorry, let me reword that, I'll say that slightly differently. In terms of science and having a degree in science, you end up in the top 10 in terms of dollars when you graduate. Okay, so there is lots of potential for dollars after you graduate. So I guess what I'm really trying to say here is that the world needs scientists to solve its problems. That's why we're all very important. Okay, scientists are needed for that. But you know, it doesn't have to be on a big scale. It can be on a big scale. And the United Nations has got a whole bunch of sustainability goals which, you know, ultimately we'd like to be able to solve. So things around stopping world hunger, um, making sure we've got uh, food security and uh, making sure we've got clean water. Those types of things are, you know, the whole world wants that sort of thing. That's a global problem. If you then come down to South Australia, those different problems are mentioned in terms of drought and, and uh, the impact on our local barley crop might be an example. And even further than that, just in your own backyard, maybe there's actually things like, how am I going to grow this plant better, which you might want to solve. That's quite an extreme version of local. But we've got local all the way up uh, to global. So if you're actually going, hmm, I want to be a scientist and I want to solve problems, then actually what you're, going, what you're thinking about then is the possibility of being a future scientist. And, you know, we can't predict all of the jobs that are out there. Ten years ago, we would not have predicted that every, most of you guys in the room have probably got a mobile phone now. We would not have predicted that ten years ago. There's been a revolution in the communication industry. There is likely to be an industry... A, 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 um, lots of innovation and revolution in other industries, such as big data and artificial intelligence and all of these different words which are all starting to appear uh, in the media. But what it means is, as a future scientist, you are a world problem solver. You might become a data scientist, you might become a nutritionist, an ecologist, a forensic scientist, merchant banker. Yes, you might even be able to solve problems as it relates to money genetic researchers, vets. There's a whole range of different things. Now, the reason why I'm flashing this up here is this particular website here, ua.edu.au, um, Future Scientist. Actually, you should visit it because it actually has lots of different examples of the different types of careers of where our graduates have gone. And so it's worth, well worth the visit. But let's ask some graduates, they're not here in person, but they're on the slide here. Let's see where they've ended up, just to give you an idea of the types of things that our graduates do. So the first lady there, Hannah McArdle, um, I actually know Hannah quite well because she did a Bachelor of Agricultural Sciences and me being a plant scientist, I do a lot of teaching into that particular degree. But Hannah, um, when she uh, left university, went and worked for um, Ausveg, which look after uh, vegetables and the marketing of vegetables, so she became very interested in marketing. But the other side of it was she was out in the field. She now works for Syngenta in crop protection, which means she's definitely out in the field. And you can see her comment there is, I love working outdoors. Sitting at a desk every day is not for me, but I still wanted to study a science degree. So that opportunity to sometimes work outside. Luke, uh, the next one along is at the Royal Adelaide Hospital as a clinical research scientist and, you know, it took him, he decided that he could actually go in any particular direction and he followed 
different things that he was interested in until he finally settled on something um, that he was interested in. Sally, there, my degree opened so many opportunities. I was able to work on Ice Cube for my PhD and make a trip to the South Pole. Now I get to continue my work at um, University of California, Berkeley. So she's overseas. Wow, that's great. Now you might be going, what is Ice Cube? Well, Ice Cube is this three kilometre deep patch of ice um, down at the South Pole, about one kilometre squared. And what it is, is basically a place where there is a station which they shot these particles out into space. They went into a black hole and the black hole spat back out these things called neutrinos. Neutrinos are subatomic particles. They hit that ice and the ice is the cleanest, purest ice on the planet and it has to be very clean, it has to be very pure. pure. And in, in uh, contacting that, it turns them into uh, muons, which are another subatomic particle. And basically you end up with this blue, you could follow them down through the ice. They were a blue streak. Um, and so she got to be part of that particular experiment, which is pretty exciting to find the first um, neutrinos and a black hole. So it told them what direction the black hole was in. At least that's my understanding. I'll just point out, I am not a physicist. I'm a plant scientist, but that's my understanding <laughs> of it, at least. And the last person there is actually someone who took that entrepreneurship side of things. So he's actually started his own company called Life Whisperer, which looks at IVF technology or in vitro fertilization technology. And he's saying it gave him that, that mindset to tackle the problems uh, in industry in particular. So that's some of where our graduates have gone. Um, in terms of coming to the Uni of Adelaide, look, we're in the top 150 in the world. 100% um, of, of our research here is above world standard. We've got lots of industry partners on all three campuses. And we're also number one for graduate satisfaction. And when I'm talking about graduate satisfaction, I'm talking about things like not just what they learn, but also things like the fact that they get opportunities to do industry placements, the fact that our students have global opportunities. They can study overseas for part of their degree, or they might have access to certain scholarships as well. And obviously, South Australia is a pretty good place to live and uh, study at the same time. So that's it from me in terms of the science. I'm going to hand back over to um, Nicola now, who's going to tell you about the Science Academy. Thanks, Nicola. Thanks very much, Amanda. Uh, I really hope that you've taken away um, from what Amanda said, uh, that, you know, science has got so many opportunities for you um, and so many uh, different careers. Um, and the skills that you're going to learn in a science degree, even if you end up in a different industry altogether, are still going to be really, really valuable. Um, and that's really what the Science Academy um, is all about. We want to help you um, take your passion for science and, and find the career that's right for you. So, basically, the science... Oh. There we go. Um, basically, the Science Academy is um, a, an outreach program for students who are in years 8 to 12 who are passionate about science. Um, but we know life as a year 12 student can be pretty stressed. You know, it can be st pretty stressful um, from worrying about your assignments um, to, you know, the pressure of what, what, what you need you're going to go to, what degree you're going to go to, where you're going to go on your gap year, um, all of those things. Uh, so we've tailored a special um, Science Academy uh, program for you guys, um, which has got a whole range of on-campus activities um, and uh, also an early offer into a range of science degrees here at the University of Adelaide. I'm going to talk, talk more about that. So um, in terms of in the audience now, who's actually registered for the Science Academy? Can we have a show of hands? Oh, quite a lot of you. Well done. Tick. Um, so that's great. So um, basically, uh, why you should join, or why now you should tell your friends to join, um, is that 
Um, by joining the Science Academy, you're going to learn, um, you know, about all of those opportunities that Amanda's spoken about in more detail. Um, you're also going to get insight into what it's like to be a student here on um, at the University uh, of Adelaide. Um, You'll also, like I said, benefit into an early offer into a range of science degrees, and I'm going to go into that in more depth. Um, invites to on-campus events, networking opportunities with graduates and industry professionals, um, meet other like-minded people, so we're all here because of our love of science, um, and you're going to get ongoing support from our, our staff members. So. Um, and that's academic and professional staff members on admissions or prerequisites. We know it can be hard to navigate that. So through Science Academy, you're going to get that support. So um, a bit more about the events that we've got on offer. Um, so the next event that's coming up is the April um, School Holiday Workshop. So this workshop is um, a bit of a choose your own science adventure. It's run over two days. Um, and we've got five different activities and you guys can actually choose which activities are most relevant to you, for you. So we have got um, activities in chemistry, biology, drone technology, uh, physics and laser radio workshop and food and nutrition. So um, that's live on our website now. Um, you can register tonight if you'd like or you can um, register at home. We can send, send out the link of course to all that information. Um, and that's a really good opportunity to, to try you know, some different things. So you might think, like, oh, I'm really interested in chemistry, and you come in and you give that a bit of a try, or oh, actually, you know, I'm, I'm doing physics now, but I'm not sure that's quite right for me. Come to um, you know, the workshop and, and give it a go. The STEM Careers Night, so that's the next one in May, um, and that's a great opportunity to come and hear from industry. So industry talk at that event, um, some of our graduates talk at that event, and so you can have an opportunity to speak with them and see um, how they got into the career um, that they're in, what did they do at university, what, you know, what subjects did they do at school, and, and what's their journey. Um, we've also got um, a uh, degree preview evening, um, and that's uh, in June. Uh, now that's a really good event because we're going to talk about all our programs, we're going to talk about all our prerequisites and pathways. So uh, in June, if you're thinking, oh, I love science, I'm not quite sure which degree is right for me, come to that event because you'll learn a bit more um, about how we can get you in, in, into a place here in, in the University of Adelaide. Um, we've also got um, Roseworthy, so as Amanda said, we're over three different campuses. So Roseworthy is where we do animal science, animal behaviour and vet bioscience. So there you can go out to the campus, you can have a tour of the facilities, you can talk to the academics, you can talk to some of the students there. And it's really um, an invaluable session for people who are interested in those fields of study. Um, the dates haven't been confirmed yet, but we'll keep you up to date with that. Um, in August, we have our open day, of course, which I'm sure many of you have attended before, um, and that just showcases everything that the university has on offer. Um, in September, we have um, SASTA exam prep seminars. So we have seminars in chemistry, uh, biology, physics, and psychology. Um, and they're run here on the University um, of Adelaide campus, and they're run by SASTA, which is South Australia's Science Teachers Association. And as a, as a Science Academy member, you'll get discounted tickets to come along to those, and they're really good. It's not about necessarily the content, but it's about tips and tricks about before you go into your exam, what, how, how do you, um, what kind of skills do you need to be able to take those exams. Um, and then uh, in October, we have an, our Ingenuity event, which is a, um, our showcase event for our fourth year engineering students. So if anybody's interested in engineering, I highly recommend that you come along to that. And you get to see um, their graduate's final projects. You get to speak with them. You get to speak with industry representation there as well. Um, so it's a, it's a really good event to, to find out exactly what you would be doing if you, if you came and did engineering here. Okay, so the early offer program, which is one of the main benefits for you guys um, in the program, so that's basically rewarding you for studying science in year 12, right? 
And we know there's more to you than your exam results. And, um, and we know that studying science at high school is going to help you if you want to study science at university. It makes sense, right? And um, basically, we can offer you, um, there are some eligibility requirements which I'll go through, but we can offer you um, an early offer, um, an early provisional offer into a range of science degrees here at the University of Adelaide uh, before you sit your exams. So it's, it's a bit, you know, it takes the pressure off a little bit when you're going into those exams. So eligibility, you need to be in year 12, um, you need to gain a C plus or higher in two of your science subjects or one science and one maths. I would just note that psychology is not included in the science subjects, um, you can hear a few groans, but um, if there is, if you are doing psychology and you have got a specific degree pathway, talk to us, you know, um, we have a lot of different options. Um, Achieving an ATAR of 65 or higher, so that's the minimum ATAR. Um, meet the prerequisites of your chosen degree. So some of our degrees do have prerequisites, um, and you will need to meet those. Um, and obviously preference uh, your program in SATAC. So you still need to uh, apply to SATAC uh, through the, you know, the, the kind of regular application process. So most of our degrees are available in this program. There are about four that are not available, um, but we do, you know, like I said, if, the, if you are kind of um, set on doing visit high computational, high performance computational physics, um, you know, we, we can talk to you. Uh, there are uh, pathways and options available. Um, and basically, don't panic. You know, if you don't, if it comes to the end of year 12 and you don't get your first preference, there's always an option. Um, and as part of Science Academy, what we want to do is we want to reduce that stress. So talk to us early on, um, and we can see, uh, you know, um, how we can get you into a degree here. So key dates to be aware of: um, March. So if you've not already already registered, I highly recommend that you register for the program um, early, so that you get an opportunity to be part of all of the events that are happening. Um, as well as ongoing communication throughout the year. Um, as I said, events in August, um, if you're eligible, so if you do the two science subjects, or so one science and one maths, you'll receive the early offer in the post. Um, August, SATAC opens, um, and you lodge your SATAC application um, in August and September. And then uh, in December, uh, last year, uh, all the unis did an, an early offer out. So that happened late December. Um, you'll get your results, and then that comes out about two days later, I think. And uh, all the universities will be doing that um, again, should be doing that again this year. Um, and then the main university of offer rounds. So if you don't get one in December, don't panic. There's plenty more offer rounds that, that, that happen. Um, and like I said, you know, um, there's so many different options. If you don't get your first preference, there's a whole range of different things that um, you can do uh, to get into the degree that you, you want to get into. It might be a slightly different pathway than you're expecting or slightly longer, but you, you, I'm sure we'll be able to get you there. So, next steps. Um, so you need to register to be eligible for the offer. Um, I highly recommend that you um, check out the school holiday workshop because places for that will be limited. Some of the numbers are, um, some of the places are different for the different workshops. Um, we've got more information on our website, so Science Academy um, link there and the Future Scientist link, as Amanda spoke about before. So that's a little bit, that's really it from me. Um, kind of over to you really for any audience Questions that you might have. Questions? Questions over there? Uh, which of the degrees related to radiology? Degrees related to radiology. I might have to hand over to my colleague Ari, who's making his way down the stairs right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so in terms of radiology, 
indeed there are a couple of options. So for us, it's mostly focused on preparing you, and then you would go on and do a postgraduate qualification in that field elsewhere. So for us, we want to do a science qualification, generally around the physics areas, um, potentially a bit of biology in there too. But there's no dedicated specific degree for radiology with us. You would use us as a pathway to get into that later on somewhere else. Yeah. Any other questions? So um, basically it's assessed on a case by case basis in that scenario, um, usually you have to meet the ATAR to get into that actual programme, um, but talk to us when you get your exam results because there could be a different option into that. So it might be that um, you actually start in a Bachelor of Science, um, if you wanted to say for example you want to get into biotech or biomed, you might actually start in a Bachelor of Science first and then transfer there later. The biggest thing is to have the right prereqs. That's probably what we're most um, kind of interested in. Yeah, question over. <laughs> space science. Did you mention chemistry or something? Space science, yes. I think you can. I think you might be able to. I might have to. T I'll, I'll have find to. out for you, and I'll <laughs> after the science uh, after the session here, I'll find out for you. It's a good question. You can certainly do electives in that area. Yes, yeah, you can do electives, but whether you can major, I don't know. We'll, we'll find that out. Any other questions? Yeah, questions back there. Um, if you go for an early option, is it expected whether you can apply for a scholarship? No, you can apply for scholarships, that's fine. Any more questions? Okay, well, all our team will be outside in the foyer um, and available to answer any questions that you might have. I want to really thank you all for spending your time with us tonight. Thank you, thank you very much.